If you walked into the trendiest Manhattan bars of the 1920s, you'd find the trendiest New Yorkers enjoying the latest trend, glow-in-the-dark drinks. It wasn't just drinks that glowed in the dark back then. People could get glow-in-the-dark creams, glow-in-the-dark watches, glow-in-the-dark ink, and for those particularly delicate ailments, glow-in-the-dark suppositories. They were possible because of an astonishing discovery a few years earlier. Scientists have found metals that seem to give off heat and light. How could this be? The discovery of these metals raised profound questions. What was the source of the light? Light's energy. So how were they making energy? It was one of the most cherished ideas of physics that energy could not be made from nothing actually incorrect? Naturally, the public approached these materials with due reverence and awe, and the care necessary for science that has not yet been understood. Only kidding. They made novelty drinks to be ingested in one end, and novelty suppositories for the other. For a brief time, these radioactive materials weren't just exciting, they were seen as modern, health-giving, and when taken in drinks, advertisers eagerly explained, they gave people energy. Then, of course, people started to die. In a way, the advertisers' claims were correct, because radiation, which is what made the drinks glow, is indeed a form of energy. However, the energy isn't created from nothing. It's created from the atoms inside the materials. Some atoms just don't want to exist. They're unstable and fizzing, eager to be something else, something boring, something that doesn't end up amazing people by glowing in cocktails. The way they become something else is by changing their nucleus, by spewing out bits of themselves until they can calm down. Today, we know this as radioactive decay and associate it with, say, Chernobyl rather than cocktails. There are three kinds of radioactive decay. For some of these materials, the quickest way to get their atoms to stabilise is known as alpha decay. That's when they lose a particle that has two neutrons and two protons from the nucleus. This particle, known as an alpha particle, skitters off. Because of its relatively big size, it gets stopped quite quickly by a sheet of paper or, if it's skittering from a suppository, by your bottom. Other radioactive materials go through something called beta decay, this is when a single electron, negatively charged and almost massless, spins out, almost unnoticed from the nucleus, leaving behind one neutron that has been turned into a positively charged proton. Because electrons are smaller and sleeker than bumbling helium ions, beta radiation can go further on its journey than the alpha radiation before being stopped. Quite possibly, it will even escape your bottom. Third and finally, there's gamma radiation. This is different to the others because it doesn't emit any particles with mass. Instead, the nucleus of the atom loses energy as an electromagnetic photon. This gamma radiation can travel through bottoms, through bottoms coated in suits of armour, and, in fact, through a thick block of lead. Radiation, we now know, is dangerous. But not especially so in low doses, if only because they were so expensive most people treated radioactive drinks as a novelty. Not everyone, though. A man called Eben Byers was extremely wealthy and extremely addicted to Radithor, the leading glow-in-the-dark drink of its time. He downed a bottle a day for three years. Slowly, the radium accumulated in his system. It made its way into his bones, circulating around his body. And there, particle by particle, the alpha radiation did its work. Holes appeared in his skull. His jaw fell off. He died a pretty unpleasant death. Today, he's buried in a lead-lined coffin as, beneath the ground, the residue of those drinks continues to send radiation pinging out from his decaying bones. It will keep doing so for many centuries yet. Cheers.